Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the Morning Market Review. It's Thursday, it's the 10th of August. My name is Russell Shaw. I'm a Senior Market Specialist at FXM. And my email address, just want to highlight that, is rshaw at fxm.com. So if anyone needs to contact me, that's the email address to use. I'm just going to go ahead and bring up our disclaimers. We'll start off with the high-risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Good morning, Kim. Thank you very much for joining. Hey, Raj, morning to you. Thank you for signing in. Hey, Howard, pleasure to have you on the webinar. Thank you for signing in. All right, um, let's just bring up the uh, market commentaries disclaimer. And here is the references, Market Scope 2.0 and Training View. And um, just want to remind everyone that we're going to get the CPI, going to get CPI um, news out today. It's going to be at 2:30 ZA, which will be 1:30 UK, and that's going to be uh, market moving. Let's just take a look at uh, the US dollar. Let's move that across. And we'll start with the analysis on the greenback. And we can start um, we'll start the top down there. All right. So um, let's start off with the trend analysis. OK, the trend analysis is determined by peaks and troughs. Um, we can see the lower peak, the lower trough. Uh, we've still got lower peak question mark here. One of the um, one of the technical uh, indicators is that of resistance. Uh, well, let's call it a technical study. We've got uh, we right in the midst of overhead resistance. The greenbacks having some uh, some time trying to break through that resistance. And um, what we want to do is just see if that resistance has some sort of uh, implication for price action. Now, I would be more comfortable if the RSI was below 50, um, the RSI being a momentum reading. And if it was below 50, I would give more credibility or let, let me say more power to the uh, uh, reaction power to the resistance level. Um, so I just want to keep an eye on this RSI. The longer it stays above 50, the more buoyant the loss of the greenback. Uh, when we get the CPI announcement out today, um, a sort of a strong beat to the upside perhaps suggests uh, some dollar strength. Now, we have seen um, inflation moderating and I, I expect the inflation to carry on moderating uh, but we are going to have or there is expected to be what's called a base effect today so what happens is the inflation from a year ago had already come down quite significantly meaning that um, let, let me just try, uh, start again we, we're measuring over a 12-month period last month's 12 months back okay, was um, higher than this month's 12 months back, which puts in a, a base effect. Okay, so we just want to be um, cognizant of uh, that fact. What I'm really going to be looking at is uh, the month-on-month -month figures. If we get a 0.2% month-on-month, um, that would be in alignment with the Fed's target of uh, 2% if we have to annualize the 0.2%. The problem with month-on-month uh, -month figures is they're very erratic, they're very volatile, but um, uh, we could take a look at a sort of a simple moving average over the last three months to get an idea. And I think that uh, the inflation numbers are still going to show signs of moderation. And I think that because they're showing signs of moderation, this resistance area might have a uh, an impact and um, that's going to be interesting but 
just be very careful when the inflation numbers come out, okay, because uh, we'll be market moving. If we go down to the uh, daily chart here, um, we still are in zone one. Uh, the previous uh, time you, you and I spoke, so we, that was Tuesday, I suggested what happens if there is a lower peak coming in here? Mm, this is sort of a big ask from me. I'll tell you why it's a big ask, because we do have a bullish reference candidate. What, what we effectively got to see, um, is it a bullish reference candle? No, it's actually, it's not, sorry. Um, it's not, uh, let me just... Um, Bring in this arrow again. So I was looking at this candle as the, as the reference candle. I beg your pardon, that's not correct. This candle is the reference candle. What's the distinction? What's the difference? We're looking for the candle that's got the lowest low in at least three candles. This is the candle with the lowest low in at least three candles. That makes this the reference candle. Okay. So uh, we sort of caught in a trading range here over this is the daily chart. So over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last eight trading days, a greenback is uh, moving sideways. Um, and there is a tension between this reference, this reference candle here, this potential reference candle here, and this potential reference candle. Um, there's no doubt that it is in zone one. Zone one is the uh, the bullish area, but Working from the top down, I want to reiterate, we've still got this overhead resistance ahead of us. So this overhead resistance, the question is, how influential is that? And if it is influential, okay, there we go. Resistance, 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 right? And then there's a tension between this reference candle, which is the bullish reference candle, and this reference candle, which is the bearish reference candle. Let's just go down to the hourly chart and see how the hourly chart is behaving. Okay, and um, let's clean this up somewhat and we'll start the analysis again. Okay. So last time we spoke, I said, could this be a, uh, a head and shoulders? Uh, the answer to that is no, it's, it's, it's not. So there would be the left shoulder, but this, there's no symmetry here. So let's change that and let's look at it as follows. Let's put in the peak over here. Okay, let's put in the trough right over there. And again, uh, we're running with the hypothesis of overhead resistance. Given that hypothesis, we've got a lower peak here. Okay. And now we're getting some triggers to the downside. And we want to see, do we actually get a, a dead cross? Okay, so a dead cross would be the uh, green five-hour exponential moving average closing below the uh, 10, the orange 10-hour exponential moving average. Uh, we'll know if there's that dead cross in the next eight minutes or so. And we've got a bearish cross here. Okay, so it does look like there is uh, some sort of pressure coming in on the greenback side of things. Again, I want to stress, be very careful with the CPI announcement. It does look as if there is some weakness seeping in ahead of that uh, CPI announcement. And if we kind of move to the uh, 20 minus area, we get the swing, but I think that's going to be really dependent on the type of inflation reading uh, that we receive. Okay, given that we've got this overhead resistance on the greenback, let's just take a look at Euro, just bringing up Euro, and I would expect to see underlying support, which I think is what we do have, uh, is what we saw on Wednesday. Uh, on Tuesday, I beg your pardon. And um, what we have here, 
let's take this out. Um, is we're looking to see if we get the higher trough. So in the weekly, we do have a series of, um, sorry, we don't have a series. We've got a higher trough followed by a high peak. We're not, we want to see if the next higher trough comes in. Here is the underlying support. So sort of a mirror image of what we have with the, with the green back. Um, the RSI here to me is more constructive than what we see on the dollar side. So it is above 50. And I think that if that overhead resistance does impact on the greenback, then this underlying support similarly impacts on the euro US dollar. Let's just go down to the uh, daily chart. All right, so what I think we do is we look to see if there's going to be a double bottom here. Um, what we have is a reference candle over here, and it completes. But there's no real swing. Uh, we've carried on moving sideways. And uh, what we can do is we can take a look at this candle and use this as, an, as the second reference candle. Okay. And the second reference candle, because it is um, the lowest low in at least a three candle cluster. And then what we can do is look for a double bottom here. Okay. See if this double bottom, can you guys see the double bottom? One two so it looks as if there is uh, some sort of support here on the daily chart as well we'll need to see the rsi pop above 50. Okay, rsi is going to have to pop above 50 and then we're going to be moving from zone one into zone two and again i'm going to stress this is really going to depend on the inflation i want to see a moderation in that uh, cpi and that uh, consumer price index um, if we go through to the hourly chart here, here's the bullish cross, trigger one. Here's the bullish cross on the stochastic, trigger two. And now we want to see if we make our way up to the 80 plus area and hold. And if we hold in that 80 plus area, that would suggest there's an underlying momentum. And if there's an underlying momentum, that would suggest probability of a swing okay so let's just see if we can get some angle and separation in the emas over here some angle and separation in the emas over here and let me just see if there's any questions that have come in uh, no we're all good all right let's take a look at uh, cable as well take a look at the pound us dollar and then I'd like to take a look at gold. Okay, and again, a top-down analysis. Put in your peaks and troughs to get the trend reading. Here we can see that there are a series of higher troughs followed by higher peaks. We're looking to see if this is gonna be the next higher trough. Uh, cable pairing, not doing much this week. It is an inside week. It's completely within last week's range. So the bulls haven't had the fortitude to take price up. The bears really haven't had the fortitude to take price down. Um, and uh, this is a sort of a, a doji or a, a spinning top, which is a candle of uncertainty. And it's also an inside candle. So we're just getting a, a, a double implication of uh, uncertainty on the cable pairing on the weekly. Uh, I think that the bias is towards the upside. Why would I say that? It's because the RSI is above 50, and that's on the, the bullish side of the indicator. Let's just go down to the daily chart here. And um, I think that the double bottom we talked about on the euro potentially taking place here as well. Here's the first bottom. Okay. Here's the second bottom. Okay. And what we can do is we can put the uh, line in the sand above that candle and see if we can get some sort of movement above it, movement from zone three into zone two. Uh, watch the RSI, the RSI here has got a pop. If we don't get the pop here, uh, then we're gonna carry on uh, just either uh, moving sideways or we're gonna have um, some sort of adverse type of reading one would think on uh, the coinflation which is uh, buoying 
uh, the US dollar. That would be a very interesting um, situation. Given this underlying support on the weekly, okay, given the underlying support on the weekly, let's go down to the hourly. And again, what's interesting here, it does look as if cable starting to move on the hourly. Take a look at the five hour, a big one. Uh, take a look at the, yes, the five hour exponential moving average looks to be golden, uh, uh, charting a golden cross above the orange 10 hour exponential moving average. It looks as if we're getting the bullish cross on the stochastic. Okay, if we get some sort of angle and separation on the exponential moving averages, and we get the stochastic moving up towards the 80 plus level, then we're starting to get some momentum uh, doing the, the heavy lifting for us. Chances of a swing uh, become much more probable. So we want to keep an eye on this golden cross here. So uh, let's just reiterate what we're looking at uh, on the US dollar hourly. Just to, so we're looking for a dead cross on the US dollar, giving that dead cross on the US dollar, it's not surprising that we're getting a golden cross on the Euro US dollar pairing, and it's not surprising that we're getting a golden cross on the pound US dollar. Okay, so um, it looks like there's an orderly, um, an orderly intermarket relationship taking place here. Let's take a look at gold. Okay, let's go through to gold, do a top-down analysis there. Gold has been struggling over the uh, last few weeks. Okay, and this is interesting in that it has pushed to the downside. This is very um, um, surprising given that the precious metal generally should act in a uh, inverse correlation towards the, the greenback. Uh, there does seem to be a breakout from a downward sloping wedge here. We want to see if this is now a sort of standard pullback. And uh, what we can do is we can move this over here, use that as the measuring line. So gold actually uh, disappointing to the downside. I think, again, inflation going to have something to say about the precious metal. It's uh, pushed back heavily into the uh, zone three. And zone three actually starting to show signs of increasing volatility to the downside. Okay, so gold, uh, to me, acting uh, sort of uh, disappointingly, not quite uh, cooperating with the analysis. Um, what we can do here is, um, I think, because we're getting that expansion in volatility on the downside. And the fact that there is a break on the weekly chart and that the weekly chart has slipped below 50, uh, what we can do is we can just see if there's going to be a dead cross here. Okay. Now, that's going to be quite interesting because uh, there seems to be some sort of break in the relationship between the US dollar and, uh, and gold for the time being. So because there's a break in the relationship, I don't think the signal is as strong as it normally is, but if there is a dead cross in the EMAs and there's a, a bearish cross in the stochastic, then we can watch the 20 minus area and just see if that 20 minus area is something that um, uh, picks up some sort of swing. Uh, what is the greenback? The greenback's the dollar. The greenback's the dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The buck or the greenback, uh, that's the US dollar. Um, all right, and let's just uh, end off with taking a look at the DAX. So let's bring up uh, the DAX CFD, the G uh, German 30 CFD. And um, to me, this is uh, it's quite a, um, again, disappointing chart. This candle over here was a, uh, a nice bullish reference candle, it was completely um, overwhelmed by this bearish engulfing pattern that's pushed down with this overhead resistance here. And because we've got this overhead resistance here, uh, we just want to be very careful with how uh, price interacts. Are we getting a higher trough here or not? Uh, there does seem to be some sort of support here. 
And given that there's some sort of support, okay, uh, we want to just see if it can move from zone uh, three into zone two. Mm, it's not, to me, the most encouraging chart. You can see that there is a slight deviation here in terms of the Bollinger Bands. And um, I think that this weekly um, bearish engulfing pattern has been really damaging to the DAX. And because it's so damaging to the DAX, if we go down to the hourly chart here, uh, what you can see, we've not really done much here. It's just moving sideways. Okay, it's just moving sideways. Um, so we're kind of in a trading range on the DAX, not giving us much uh, room to read it in terms of is it bullish or is it bearish? I think what we've got to do here is we've got to give the DAX more room to breathe, get the uh, trend actually to become more apparent. Uh, the EMAs here are doing us no good. They're just whipsawing left, right and center. And I think that um, the idea here is we just want some sort of cross, some sort of angle and separation, some sort of movement by the stochastic into either the upper or the lower quintile and uh, then we can uh, reset with the analysis. But uh, just found this to be a big pity, this big bearish engulfing pattern here, really undoing all the hard work that the bulls did in the previous week. Um, so uh, a little bit, a little bit um, confusing. Um, because it's not the cleanest of charts, I would, uh, I would tend to focus on other charts which seem a little bit more clear, a little bit more clean. All right, if there are any questions, please go ahead and type those in. Any questions, go ahead and time those in. Yeah, okay, so Raj saying that he's uh, encouraged by the Euro, US dollar. Just want to stress, Raj, just want to stress uh, CPI, at 2.30 p.m. ZA, 1.30 p.m. UK. I think that's going to be market moving. So just keep uh, keep that in mind. All right, guys, let us uh, wrap up here. Thank you very much for signing in this morning. Much appreciated. And I look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. Have a great day ahead. Thanks, guys.